Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we got something really cool and something very unique, I think, that we're working on. Um, we are doing a stair railing. We are gonna do a farmhouse style. I haven't quite seen it done like this before, so this is kind of taking a couple concepts and making it kind of our own. I'm gonna do, be doing a stair railing for the rest of this uh, half of a landing, or half a set of stairs up to the landing, I mean. And we're gonna make it look like this. We're doing kind of a farmhouse style with cross bucks and like cattle panels, or hog panels, I think they're called. Um, so it will meet code. It's pretty cool. It's really beefy. It, it, it's uh, pretty budget friendly. I mean, it's still a pretty, uh, got a lot of material in there. But um, anyways, this is kind of look we wanted for our house. So I'm going to kind of show you how we're going to be building this over here on this stair railing up here. And um, so I just want to kind of show you how we're actually going to be doing it. It does take quite a few steps. It is pretty labor intensive, but I think it's very unique and I'm excited to just kind of get into it and show you how to do this rail. Okay, so I got my post set. I am just using uh, dug for four by fours simply because they're going to get wrapped. It doesn't matter. They're not finished. They're going to get hidden with wood finished boards. So I'm just using the four by four for the dimension and the strength I need. So I got them tapped, where, tamped right where I want them, plumb both ways, so I know it's exactly where it's going to go. Um, the way, reason I'm doing that now is I'm going to come and I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to figure out the height I want. I'm going to make a mark here. I'm going to make a mark here, and I'm going to go 38 off the stair nose of the tread. Code for uh, stair railings is between 34 to 38 inches. So if somebody has the right height. That's what they say is code for the height to grab. Now I am going to be putting a two by six top cap on that's wider than will meet code, but since I'm going to be a little higher, what I'm going to do is put a handrail on the inside later. So I'm not really worried about it. I just want to make sure I got the right height. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make my elevation marks. Um, take a straight edge like this. Clamp it, make marks, take my uh, post back down, go cut them, and then come back and mount them after I get the right elevation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now, and then I'll come back to it. Okay, so now that I got my posts installed, the ones that I need to from underneath or access through the floor or the wall so I can shim them and get them uh, plumb, the one up there and the one down here I can do it afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead, this is my stringer, I'm going to go ahead, my stringer uh, trim board, it's pre-painted, I'm going to go ahead and install them right by the, the stringers or the stairs as you will, um, because now I no longer need to get down in that wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this, and then go ahead and cap this with our one by eight, and then I can go ahead and finish installing that post and this post, and then move on to actually building this railing, so. So I got these posts on now, all of them. Um, got this one by eight on. Caps it out really nice. Um, and then on the inside, we got this one by uh, 12. And that's kind of how that looks. Gives it kind of a nice finished look. It'll get some caulk and paint wherever my nails are, but um, it just lets the carpet go up to it. 
and then um, keeps this kind of traditional look. I think it looks really good. So now we can actually move on to building the panels for this railing. Okay hey guys, so I'm kind of going to show you, I'm building the frames um, right now for the railing sections. I'm just basically piecing them in between my posts to fit. Um, let me show you up closer. So I'm using 4x4 four four material for the bottom. I'm not doing any elevated elevation. I'm just going to take this all the way down to the bottom and uh, this can get caulked and painted later. And then I'm using 2x4 for the sides and then the top so you'll see that this you'll not see so I did not paint it because it's going to get a cap on it this you will not see because it's going to get a face for it like a one by six later um, so um, basically just went and got uh, from the store went and got uh, dug for four by fours and two by fours sand them down and I used a sprayer so it gave me a nicer finish now I know it's going to need to be touched up like right here but that's okay. Um, you know, you'll get a little bit of sometimes um, chips when you cut it. So that's okay. You got to plan on repainting some of it. But I wanted to do it ahead of time because the finish will still come out better. Put a lot of coats on. So I got those two made. I got to go ahead and build that one. But this is really pretty budget friendly because it's using mainly dimensional lumber. I mean, you're going to have one by, four by, and two by. So um, really simple, you basically just figure out your angles or your side from top to bottom. Um, I cut mine on a 37 degree cut. Um, I overlap the top to the sides and I put some screws in right here. And then I overlapped the side to the bottom because it is a four by to tie them together. Put screws on the back side because can't really screw in here. You don't want to see these screws. So put them in the back side so you don't see them here. Top side so you don't see them here because it's going to get covered. Um, pretty simple. Just using some uh, wood screws. So it's really easy. Got those done. I'm going to go ahead and do that one and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, so now I got this cut. We're just going to go ahead and check and see how this one fits out. It's pretty nice, so you can kind of see the lines are pretty nice, pretty good. So now this is a stair one, so it, it's a little bit odd angles. Um, but I'm basically just showing you what I did up here on a larger section. This would be more of a square one. Um, so that's the principle, you just, you can kind of figure it out to whatever the size your railing is, whatever the width. As long as you just find the center of the board and go from corner to corner. So now that I got that done, I'm going to go ahead and do another pair of these, just opposites on the other side. And then once I get that done, I'll be doing this section and then this section. I'm going to finish up this one and then I will show you the next step after I get those cut. Okay guys, so now that I got all these crossbooks done, the next thing I want to do is I would like these boards to sit flush with each other. Because uh, as of now, these boards are stacking on top of each other like this. You can see, I would like this board and this board to intersect even, like where they're flat. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a half lap joint. right where the intersect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, make sure the boards are right where I want them and they're intersecting. I'm going to come here and start a line here on the face side of one board. 
and the back side of the other board. And this is kind of where it's going. That one board is going to intersect. You see these lines. What I'm going to do is come with a compact router. You can use different ways. You can use saws, or whatever. I'm going to come down here. Basically, halfway through, I'm going to take out half the material of this board here, and then on the other board, I'm going to do take out half the material on the other side, and then they're going to be able to right where they intersect, they're going to sit flat into each other. So I'm just going to go ahead, go outside, set up my compact router, and um, kind of test this out. I've already done some, so I want to show you how it kind of works. Okay, so I got the marks here that I want to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take it and clamp it to a board. I'm going to go ahead and router this out. So by doing that, I'm just going to take, I got I think a half inch, it's starting to get a little burnt, but um, router, straight router tip. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that in here. But to make sure it's really nice, I'm going to just use a straight edge. And I'm going to gauge whatever the distance of the bit is from the table on the router. Let me show you. Like right here. So this is an inch and a half from here to here. So I'm going to go ahead and go an inch and a half. Inch and a half here from my line to here to try to keep a really nice straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and set that. I'm going to go ahead and just clamp it down so it stays put. Double check it. Triple check it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a depth to half of this. Maybe slightly beyond because I want to make sure that they can fully intersect. So what I do, I went ahead and got that set. So I'm just going to go ahead and start routering this out. So just film it for a little bit. And then... Now we kind of got that. I'm just going to go ahead and check it, make sure the board fits. And it's got just a little bit of play. You want a little bit of play. If you make it completely tight, there's no room for error, which is okay. But we just want a little bit of room. So now that I got that done, you can see both sides, both sides like here and here. Looks pretty good. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and do this one and then do the, repeat the same step I did here, just like on all of them. And then I'm going to go take them in place and check them all out. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay, so we got these notched into each other now. That's kind of how it looks. These are just sitting in here. These are going to come back out now. Now that we got all these up, like this, make sure they all fit. We're going to take all these out and then what we're going to do is take the frame out, take it back apart and we're going to do a dado a channel in here. The four by fours and all the tops and sides to receive our panel. I'll just kind of take it outside and show you how we're going to do that. Next. Okay guys, so I'm outside now. These are the wire panels that I'll be using. This is called a cattle panel. Some places call it horse panels. I got it from my local feed supply store. And what they are is they're four by four squares equal from bottom to top. They come in like 16 foot lengths. Um, they're welded right here. They're really strong stuff. So that's what I'm kind of going to be using for the mesh insert of my uh, panels. 
So I go ahead and just lay it down. I'm gonna go ahead and bring out each of the frame one by, one by, I mean one at a time, sorry, excuse me. And then I'm just gonna lay it out, orient it the way I want it. I want it centered top and bottom and left to right if I can. So like if it's two inches on the bottom, two inches on the top, like so. So orient it up, square it up, and then what I'm gonna do is just come down here and make a marker mark on each side of the corners on each side and then I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing up and then beyond those marks I'm going to measure a half inch down to the sides and up and then take a straight edge mark it and cut it so basically I'm going to mark it one inch larger than that hole in the frame that way it can go a half inch on each side in that'll be enough to hold it you can go three quarter but I'm probably going to cut it half inch because if I go too much, I seem to end up getting it kind of tight. So I'm going to do a half inch and then notch it out probably like five eighths to three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Go ahead and mark it and then just cut it with some bolt cutters. You can use it right. This is kind of what it looks like. It should fit in here now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of my other two panels just like this. Same process. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move it on to putting a channel in these boards so these will inset into them. So in order to rip this channel and to receive the hog panels, I used my table saw with an adjustable dado blade that you can adjust to different widths based on the angle. So I set it at a 3 16 wide dado and about a half inch deep just to have a little bit of space for my hog panel. And I set the fence for an inch and three quarter away from to the outside of the blade to the side of the fence that because I'm using two by four material I want to have the blade just offset of the center so if I run my tops versus one way and then run my sides the other way I want the channels just to be offset because the hog panel the verticals versus the horizontals are offset you'll see what I mean a little bit later but anyways this uh, dado blade tends to chip out material really well so I used a trick of using blue masking tape to help hold in that finished material, which came out really well. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you what I mean by this. So here, like if you can kind of see, so this one is going to go like this, and this one's going to go like that right there. So basically the center line is this side of this side of the groove on this one and this one. And when the wire goes in, the verticals go one way, the horizontals go on the other way because they're offset. So I'll show you kind of what I mean. You'll see what I mean when I actually get the wire in, but I just kind of want to show you that's kind of what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead, I got this laid out. I'm gonna go ahead and test fit the wire in it. 
and if it's good I'm going to take it back apart and then paint in this uh, groove but I'm just going to test fit it before uh, final to know if I need to cut the wire or make an adjustment Okay, so we got all this railing built. We got the everything faced. Um, so what we're going to be doing is I'm using this board as a top cap. Um, I sprayed a lot of coats on it because I wanted that really kind of nice, clean finish um, as a, of a sprayer that you can see. But anyways, what I took is I took a two by eight and I ripped it down to like six and a quarter. So I had a um, larger overhang this way than just using a two by six. Um, and what it also did is by ripping it down the table saw, got rid of that round edge that a lot of dimensional lumber has and you can kind of tell if you're looking for it. So that's what I did. I just took a two by eight, ripped it down and literally I'm going to go ahead and just take some construction adhesive and put it on top of this rail. And then it's going to go on top just like that. And then what I'm going to do is come from the bottom and put a bunch of fasteners, nails and screws, um, just so I don't have to go through the face of this board. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we are just about wrapping this thing up. It'll just be caulk and paint and maybe some uh, speckles. So. I'm just going to go ahead and get this up, and then I'll show you how it comes out when it's all up and done.
So I went and got this up. Did have a little bit of a twist, so I tried to clamp it down as much as I could. Probably put a little more fasteners than I would need to if it wasn't. But went ahead and got that up. This one will need to be finished yet, so I'm not going to attach that yet. I'm going to go spray it and then bring it back and fasten it. But, so basically what I'm going to do yet is I'm going to take caulk, fill all these corners, spack all in the nail holes and the smooth surfaces, like the flat surfaces I mean. And then I can patch. I did put some screws in here. Since I didn't want to put it up top, I wanted to pull this down, especially since it had a twist. And we'll just caulk all this. We'll get all that done. Um, and then kind of show you what the finished result is when it's all wrapped up. Okay guys, so we got this railing complete now. There's been carpet that's been put on, we got furniture in. Um, but just kind of want to show you how it kind of came out. Really like it. Got all the painting done. Now this is a white. Um, my kids like to touch it. So we did use like an enamel paint. Um, that's a little more pricey. And um, a little more finicky to work with. But we use that on this. But I still think I might add like a metal handrail coming up the wall and then up this way. But uh, anyways, this is kind of how it came out. We love the look of it. Um, looks really sharp, very different, I guess. Um, it took a little bit of time, quite a bit of time actually, but uh, very proud of it, and I think it adds to this farmhouse look and something different. So, um, I know it's a little bit of a longer video, but wanted to kind of show you from start to finish how it came out. So, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, let me know, and uh, if you want to see more videos, uh, subscribe to our channel to see more. Till next time guys, Josh out.